360. Oh, bro, it's going viral. It's like, because I'm not even. What? If you divide that by what an average savings of what, four or five hundred dollars? That's a lot of people, right? How many people? I'm going to ask the Melkies to, to generate how many people have used it. I like hundreds of people. hundreds of people at this point. Easily and hundreds. Might even be thousands. I was going to say, if the average is 400 in savings, that would easily put us between 900 to 1,200 people. That's awesome, guys. People are engaging with the tool. And then they're starting to share, by the way. Shout out to AK for adding the share widget. People are use, literally using it and saying, wow, I didn't know I could save so much on credit. There goes that shareability that we were trying to crack. Yep. Good it, job. Nice work, guys. Um, moving over to email marketing, AK, I did... I. Uh, uploaded all the emails, but for the life of me, I didn't know how to tweak the the timing between each of the triggers. So we're collecting, we have over 100 million car crashes in our database going back 15 years, operationalized across 27 states. A typical carrier underwrites off of 40,000 crashes in the state of Texas in the year. We collect 50,000 crashes in the state of Texas per month. And that's just the state of Texas alone. Geospatially map these crashes so we know where they occur. We attach them to a particular road segment. We're able to determine time of day, lane, uh, tr what was the particular traffic volume at the particular time of the incident and was it a steep curve was it a blind turn and so on and we have this data available to us that we've operationalized and all uh, at scale so when you can develop a data strategy that allows you to compute your assessments from population size sample statistics then you are far less dependent on the scale of the particular what we then are able to do is we have a baseline assumption about risk in your particular area from the day that you join Loop. And what you will see with other um, carriers, they'll do like a test drive. That's because they're dependent on your telematics to price you. So you have to drive for two weeks before they're able to develop an assessment of your risk profile. When you join Loop, we already know. Day one. Mm. And what we're able to do is within 30 days of you joining Loop, we can calibrate your risk profile against our initial assessment, give you, by the way, opportunities to improve your driving behavior on the road. Let's explore this. When you're driving, a typical telematics enabled carrier is collecting and giving back to you the amount of times that you sped, hard broke, and all this other stuff, which I believe is ridiculously unuseful. Those are the inputs. Those are not the outputs for a consumer. You don't think in terms of like how many times you sped or hard broke. What you think about is like, man, am I being safe on the road? Or, you know, things that are relevant to your particular, you know, to your circumstance. So what we're able to do as a result of having this, uh, this very robust data set is not only price you accurately, we're also able to take your driving behavior, contextualize it against the road and deliver safety insights back to you. So Loop is hardly an insurer we're a driver's companion tool we see a loop we see insurance as a vehicle to deploy empathy at scale it's not lost on me how cool it is that the ceo of we just got to austin and the ceo of capital factory is the biggest startup hub here uh i'm on tech spaces with and he hit me up and he said hey john you want to come have lunch with uh or want to come have dinner with jason calcanis I'm like yeah that sounds good uh, can I bring my team? So, sure. So now we're about to go do that. But, um, yeah.
TomTom. So TomTom, a lot of people think that they're kind of out of the market, but they now develop the on-vehicle navigation for close to 50% of the U.S. market. They do over-index for like commercial vehicles, but, but still, we use Got it. Their we thought they're gone, but they're actually embedded now. They're embedded. However, what we've now developed is they're integrating our uh, crash safety uh, predictive score into their existing product. So now we have a distribution partnership where their customers are able to optimize the fastest route. Safest route. route. Safest is powered by Loop. Like, Come on, pick? man. Come on. Who's Come not on. Pick? A lot of people are going to pick the safest route. A lot route. of people. Yeah. And, and now what we're fighting for is like we want some like brand real estate on the, on the on yeah. vehicle map where it's like, you know, the Loop logo pops up or whatever. What if when you're driving, you say, we say, hey, you, you know, you're spending you know, a lot of time on this road is a little dangerous. Here's a time comparable route that is significantly less, uh, you know, risk exposed. And I'm using this language, by the way, because we're an insurance crowd. It's going to be a lot simpler and a lot more consumer friendly. Um, and put our, like, that is powerful. Now we're equipping our insureds with the insights to drive safer. Safer roads equal safer communities and safer communities equals increased uh, loss ratio performance improve loss ratio performance. It's a perfect loop, hence the name. So there's a loop in our communication with our consumer, but there's also a loop in our community. Reporting system for each department in a way because that that that's like I think like your the initial kind of the more like simple version is like a track right but as we continue to grow and you Yo, we're start 19 people right now. we're 19 people as you start to be more and more removed that's and then strong. I start to be more and more removed that's everyone strong. starts to be more and more removed that's core exactly we need to be able to quickly and easily see what work is being done and hasn't been done and how can we help it get done. Get done. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like that little tracker that I made, that's what it does. It solves the problem. So helpful, bro. The episode goes it's an assembly so line. so helpful because of the way that it visualizes. Because of the, Perfect. instead of uh, visualizing it horizontally, you made a decision to visualize it vertically and then the assets are in the rows. So it allows you to see all the episodes coming down the stream and which assets, it's a very helpful. That was, yeah. Others stand for money. So we stand for mo. We stand for mobility. We stand for mobility. We stand for why. We stand for people. We're reverent. I'm just underlining like yep, the key yep. things in that and these things. Yep, yep. Local and data driven. All right, so I get it. This is <clears throat> our values. Slash persona. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. It's a subgroup. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. But if anybody is searching wow, for like kind of like Bitcoin, I've never, we've never, I've never ideated this. Yeah, you guys, no, like this, this is fun. Yeah, this is my I first bet. time doing this shit. It's kind of, it's fucking amazing. I We're doing this shit by myself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's much better when you're with someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I want to take notes in a notebook first. Okay, this. okay. So now yeah, yeah. you got. Like, I, I like teach a notebook. I know. I have a notebook. I, I do it. I yeah. do it. Look, look, it's my I'm notebook. Teaching right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is my. <laughs> you could possibly get. Just nah, he's a substitute. We don't need to take a fucking notebook. And I have a science seat, so you better sit down. I mean, <laughs> he is a mean teacher. Yo, he's an assigned seat. No curves. Right. No curves. 
You can never drop that, bro. Oh. Yeah, but I, I fucking like, yeah. Hell yeah, you gotta like it. Structure. Let's build out some language for her. I would love to right, so introduction. All right, so let's start script. Oh, I'll, I'll take a first pass at the script right below. Wow, yo, this the clubhouse thing is so powerful. Um, Dude, I really. Can I say a couple more themes? I'm like going through and highlighting a lot of people with kids, and there's two separate separate genres: people who feel digitally very confident, like digital extroverts, and digital introverts. People who were like, oh my God, I have to learn the internet now. Like, I don't know, I don't communicate well with people virtually. I don't know how to manage like the Zoom call, be in that space and then other people were like, I met more people on the internet than I've ever met in my whole life. Mm -hmm. Two very different digital experience customers. Crypto, buying stocks, mm -hmm. investment properties, learning a new skill was mm -hmm. definitely part of that. There were people that learned videography, learned editing. Everyone was upwardly mobile, like not upwardly mobile, what is it? Um, aspirational. Aspirational. That's Every such single a part. person, except for me, but I am like a pessimist. Did you do that on purpose? That was weird. No, not I weird, just think my experience has been different than a lot of people's. Okay. Like I'm actually afraid. And I think I white people in, yeah. in this space weird. are also very afraid. Not because they're afraid of like, black people are afraid of like people that don't look like them, but like they're now living with a greater consciousness of experience and they're like terrified about their insecurity in the world. And that can be men, it can be, but it, I mean, people of color can also be women because like we were, I mean, think about all these white neo-Nazis storming the Capitol. You don't think that makes women feel like very physically insecure re-entering society that those people can do whatever the fuck they want. Like there's a lot of nuance of like, when you get to observe people without intermingling and giving people the benefit of the doubt, like you realize how strong some bias and racism and sexism and misogyny actually is in your society. You're like, oh, I was just flying by this. Well, Do you know what I mean? I don't. Um, I don't empathize. I, I can't relate to that experience at all, but I'm trying to empathize with it. And I think there's probably a correlation of people who feel afraid and people who watch the news. I think like the news just focused on death and this and that and politics this and but these that. real things happened like the fact that a disease happened and killed millions of people and is still not under control like happened yeah i don't know um i agree but um yeah it's just interesting your experience but is valid and like it's just interesting how white people that commented it's interesting that like this was black aspiration yeah people of color category. felt feel empowered and like i feel like we generally feel mm -hmm. i definitely don't feel afraid by the pandemic i definitely don't feel afraid to go out into crowds um and i feel like there is a macro shift even of resources and attention placed on the issues that are relevant to our communities black lives matter was taken seriously it almost feels like it's our time kind of vibe. Hmm. And you can, it's palpitating. Yeah. Sean King. Yeah. 